video is a continuation of my 40s trouts. Oh, come on, Thor. Full of posies. Today's video is a continuation of my 40s trousers pattern, the Hepburn trousers, and my journey grading them up to fit me from a 30 inch waist on the pattern to my 52 inch waist. So, in my last video, I made a wearable mock up and they turned out pretty well, but there were a few changes that I wanted to make. So I did that, and this is my process of making these Hepburn trousers fit me. Also, as a reminder, this video is a collaboration with Shannon of Shannon Makes, and make sure to check out her video, which I believe came out yesterday. So without further ado, let's get into it. Here we go. To begin, I will actually do the standard recommended method for grading up patterns. So rather than add inches to the sides, as I did in my first mock-up, you slash and spread the pattern, adding width at multiple points, then true up the edges as much as possible. And it is best to do this multiple times, adding small increments each time and continuing on redrawing, slashing and spreading to the desired amount. It's kind of tedious if you're grading up 20 plus inches. <laughs> I also split and pivoted the crotch rise to make it longer. Hercules is ready to assist or keep napping on my pattern. I traced the front of the trousers before doing my adjustments. If you'd like a more in-depth explanation of how I calculated how much I needed to add to each pattern piece, I will link my previous video below. I transferred the marks and notches, then I marked where I will cut the pattern to make my adjustments. I'm using the back pattern piece that I adjusted in my previous mock-up. If you recall, I mistakenly thought I was missing the front pattern piece, so I used the back for the front and the back <laughs> in my last mock-up. And I also took in the waist a bit, made it an inch smaller in total, and took off some length. I also adjusted the leg width because I thought the previous mock-up was too wide. I made sure that the front and the back pieces lined up correctly. Before we cut the trousers out, let's check in with Shannon and see how her trousers are going. Hello, Rebecca. So it turns out that I am having my own sort of patterning hiccups as it were. Uh, so what I decided to do was I took my mock-up and I decided to go ahead and finish it off into a pair of like around the house lounge pants. And I'm really glad that I did because I did discover some things that I want to change in the final version of these pants. Um, but I also discovered that I am in fact missing an entire pattern piece. And I am actually missing it. I didn't just overlook it. I went through the entire PDF packet a couple times looking for it. Um, what it is is the facing for my pocket piece. So you can see right here, there's supposed to be a little piece um, of facing sort of where the um, buttons and buttonholes are gonna go. And uh, it does not exist. So I took a look at the, this diagram right here. It is the um, identifying each piece of the original tissue pattern. And if you look closely, 
that right there is my pocket facing. Um, so it did exist in the original version of this pattern when it was a tissue pattern, but when it got converted to um, a PDF, it doesn't exist. This is the uh, diagram that shows you how it should look when you print it off from the PDF version. And I've gone through it several times. There is no pocket facing on here. It's not really a big deal. I'm not too worried about it. I will just draft my own um, basically using the pocket and sort of, you know, making my own with my own seam allowances. The only thing that's a little bit of a bummer is that it also had the placement for the buttons on there. So I'm going to have to wing that, but that'll be fine. So um, that's going to be the next step. I'm going to draft that piece and then I think I'm all set and ready to cut it out of the real deal. So I'm going to go get ready for that. I'm using some seersucker that I've had in my stash for a while. I'm hoping these will also turn out to be a wearable mock-up. I pinned the leg fronts to the leg backs. Then I took them to the machine to sew. I had already pinked the raw edges when I cut out the pattern. Now to pin the crotch seam. I placed one leg inside the other right sides together and pinned the seam. After sewing, I tried them on without the darts sewn. Thor was very excited by this. Then I sewed the darts and took another look at the fit. Also, I sewed the opening on the right side instead of the left side. No idea why. And it actually makes it more difficult to fasten them. Oh well. Hercules was ready to cut out the waistband. Despite doing the math to make sure my waistband was the correct length, it ended up way too long. I've said before, math and I are not friends. Not a big deal since I can just cut off the excess. Now to pin and sew the waistband on. I turned my attention to the hem next and folded up and hand sewed a two inch hem. Next, I started folding over and pinning the waistband to the inside, but decided I should add interfacing. I sewed the waistband down by hand. I chose a hook to close and I can't find any of my bars or any other skirt hooks. I sewed thread bars instead. I used smaller hooks and thread loops to close the rest of the opening, but am planning on changing that to buttons. Another try on and the waist is still a bit big, but I thought, meh, it's not that big. 
and carried on. Let's check in again with Shannon and see how her trousers came out. Oh, they're really cute. They look so good. I really like the pocket and the button placket together. I wish my pattern had had that. I don't know why it didn't, but it didn't for whatever reason. I also really like the crease down the front. I omitted that from mine, not for any reason, just because I forgot to do that step. <laughs> I'm so happy that we did this collab together and these trousers look so good. Finally, I turned up a small cuff and ironed it. I also tacked the cuffs to the seams of both legs and they were complete. I took some videos wearing them to check how they looked and moved. So the question is, do I like these trousers enough that these are my final trousers? <sighs> I'm not sure. I need to look at all of the footage that I shot and just check it out and see how they look because it's just hard to tell when you're just looking in the mirror. So I wanted to take some video and I don't, I don't really have a <laughs> big enough space where I can actually see my full body all at once in a mirror. So I wanted to take some video and check and see how they look. So I'm going to check all of that out and then see if these are my final trousers. This seersucker was not what I originally thought I would make these trousers out of, but I really like it. They're very summery, like they're lightweight, but they have nice body and I think that they drape nicely. I need to actually go through and look at the pictures of these trousers and compare them to my previous wearable mock-up and see which one I like better as far as the look of it. I will do that now. I'll bring you with me. So comparing the two trousers, the legs are wider on the first. Well, it was really the second mock-up. <laughs> and I think the fabric drapes nicer. The teal trousers are too long and too big in the waist. The green seersucker trousers are also still a little bit big in the waist, despite adjusting it. They are draping a little strange because of the suspenders and are less wide in the legs. I think I like the leg width of the teal pair a bit more, even though I thought they were way too wide and adjusted the pattern for the new pair. I like the way the back looks better on the teal pair too. Oh, maybe I should have just adjusted the waist and length and used the back pattern piece for the front and the back after all. <laughs> I also think the suspenders make me look a bit like a grandpa. These suspenders were actually my pawpaws, so... <laughs> I took the waist in by taking two pleats in the back waistband so the waist fits better in these shots. Should I make another pair? Should I use the new waist and length of these and the hip and leg width of the other ones? Please let me know your opinions and ideas in the comments. I think I'll put a poll up in the community tab to see what the consensus is and go from there. I wore them with the suspenders to work and one of my students told me I looked like a leprechaun. So I guess my St. Patrick's Day outfit is sorted. For now, I will put these aside. This pair is wearable, so we just will go from there. Make sure to let me know what you think in the comments down below and in the poll when I post it. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you spending your time with me. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't, and if you'd like to be notified whenever I upload, you can hit that little bell icon. If you'd like to support the channel further, I do have a coffee account and that is linked down below. Be sure to check out Shannon's video and also stay tuned for my next series of projects. I am starting a Bridgerton inspired ensemble. So stay tuned for that and I will see you again on our next sewing adventure.